As he gears up for re-election, President Trump says he'll be doing more one-on-one -on -one interviews, and so far he has. One to ABC's George Stephanopoulos and another to NBC's Chuck Todd, both of which have come under harsh glare for what the interviewers didn't do. When it's just you and the most powerful man in the world, asking questions can be tricky. You're being a little wise guy, okay, which is, you know, typical for you. When ABC's George Stephanopoulos recently interviewed the president, he covered a lot of ground. He said no collusion. He said he didn't look at George. Collusion. The report said no collusion. Uh, did you read the report? Uh, yes, I did, and you should read it too. But some viewers were unimpressed, claiming that Stephanopoulos let Trump talk and walk all over him without challenging bogus claims like this. And he laid out all that evidence, more than a thousand formal federal prosecutors. Oh, that's, but they're all politicians. Hey, George, look, I know more about prosecutors than you'll ever know. They're politicians. I could get you 5,000 that would also say that there's nothing. NBC's Chuck Todd didn't fare much better. When he asked about the administration's border family separation policy, the president rolled out an old trope. You know, under President Obama, you had separation. I was the one that ended it. That, says the Washington Post, Jennifer Rubin, is false and both morally vapid and completely wrong, something Chuck Todd should have challenged. Rubin went on to write that CNN's Jake Tapper took the right approach when interviewing Vice President Mike Pence. America has the cleanest air and water in the world. We'll continue to use market forces. We don't have the cleanest air and water in the world. Uh, uh, we don't. Still, when you're interviewing the president, the battlefield gets a whole lot tougher. Just ask CNN Sarah Westwood, who asked the president if he would tell Vladimir Putin not to interfere with the 2020 election. What I say to him is none of your business. Go ahead. Okay, then. Yeah, what is he talking about is not our business. The only reason he's there talking to Vladimir Putin is because we elected him to go there and do it, and he's not going to tell us what he said to him? You know, anyway, um, I had some sympathy after going back and looking at both of these uh, interviews. As I've often said, somebody who hosts a show <clears throat> and when I was doing Newsmakers, and, and you, all of us, it's very hard to be abrasive or, you know, challenging or even fact-checking somebody who's sitting there one-on-one -on -one you. It's not that easy. And, ha and just to have all that stuff at your fingertips. I mean, probably there were a few times that Chuck Todd in particular could have done it, but I have some sympathy. I don't mind being abrasive. I find it comes know, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just kidding. But uh, yeah, what I would like to see, you're right, it's not necessarily as easy as it might look, and critics should keep that in mind. What I would like to see more of is uh, journalists who uh, get time with the president to... Um, uh, question him about the depth of his knowledge about specific issues. In other words, not just come with the, the gotcha questions that he can tee up and, oh, it's fake news, I can get you 5,000 prosecutors, you know. Not, not to press the case as a prosecutor necessarily or a political uh, debater might, but to say, uh, you know, let's talk about education. You know, do you know what Oh, what school choice is. You know, yeah. what's the difference between a charter school and a conventional school? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, or talk about financial yeah. uh, questions. And I think that would be very educational to yeah. the, the voter yeah. and the public. I'll tell you, what I liked about Jake Tapper's approach with Mike Pence was He's that he laughed through it. I mean, I and that was sort of the, the approach of like, wow, you guys are really ridiculous and absurd in the way you are approaching these interviews. I think what people on Twitter want is anger. They want the angry... Well, they, they that's want this, Jake. They want this combination <laughs> of, like, the angry guy and the robot who can sort of go through algorithmically and figure out every right. fact in real time that's being, you yeah, know... I mean, that's, that's, that is, as you said, it's impossible on a lot of different levels. But if you kind of approach the these these habitually lying public officials with the mild contempt mm -hmm. that they deserve and not the anger that's going to, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that seems like the right approach. Tapper's very good at it. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, what I would say is that um, people know the dance. So if George Stephanopoulos and Trump knew, each knew what the role was, so nobody comes surprised. So you're already set up in that way. Um, and then the, probably what happens that sometimes annoys everybody is that it's the simple question. It actually isn't saying, well, you said so-and-so. It's like, why? Mm. And, you know, that, yeah. that is not, that's a follow-up question that's very much in place in several places that, that could have lifted up some of this crap he was saying, mm. frankly. Um, and then uh, I think also uh, consumers of news are concerned that they end up with a situation that Jose Bilard, Bilard Diart found himself in, 
when he was doing a conversation with President Trump about Latino support. And the president said, all Hispanics love me. And he said, no, they don't. <laughs> and he said, no, you don't know what you're talking about. He says to the Latino guy, yeah. he says, I'm sorry, Mr. President. No, they don't. <laughs> so now where, where are you going to go? Yeah. So here we are back and forth. I mean, we know that that he's just making up stuff. But and Jose stood in for all the rest of us saying, no, they don't. But where are you going? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought Stephanopoulos got a raw deal here. I mean, he was spending 30 hours yeah. with the president. And if you start out, the president lies all the time. Mm. And if you start out in the first 50 minutes saying, actually, that's not true. Actually, yeah. that's not true. Actually, it's that's not true. On. He's not going to get yeah. what he came there to get. Also, he managed to get President Trump to make that very remarkable statement about, yeah, of yeah. course I'd take foreign assistance uh, if, if uh, it was offered to me by another country. Not foreign assistance, foreign dirt. I would take foreign sure, dirt. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. The point, point yeah. being, he got him to say something that made it news. made news. And yeah. that the, the president, with, and this is rare, ended up having to walk back. So I think all mm. things considered, and he pushed back on factual errors. He did it strategically. Chuck Todd, though, uh, I don't know yeah, he did what some excuse. He, I had the impression watching Chuck Todd that he just didn't didn't know his stuff. To not be able to push back on Obama's family border yeah, separation policy versus the Trump administration's, which is new and fundamentally different, this is what he does for a living. And you would think, this is a huge interview. Aren't you going to be prepping all week, be ready for this? Uh, yeah, that was terrible. I agree.